Hello guys, how you doing this morning? Good to see you again. You're beautiful people, beautiful people. Uh, yeah, topic today is uh, vaping, vaping bees and uh, do no harm. Yeah, uh, yeah, these doctors, they, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about doctors a little bit. Uh, they do that oath, you know. They have that oath they do. Do no harm. Yep. Mm hmm Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that make you just feel warm and fuzzy? Oh, God, I get a good sensation when I hear that oath. That's unbelievable what's going on today, guys. I got friends and family members dropping dead like flies, okay? Unbelievable. And then my friends, their friend, their family members, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And so, but we, but we do the oath, do no harm. And uh, they basically uh, die death by doctor, the way I look at it. Uh, yeah, I see nothing coming good out of this deal at all. Nothing good coming out of this doctor stuff at all. Um, Especially when you can just fix things with a uh, diet. Mm-hmm, exactly. Uh, ketogenic diet's nice, but if, if you want to go one step further, if that doesn't work for you, go carnivore like I'm doing. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day, what do you eat? Well, I eat meat. You can eat any kind of meat. You could eat squirrels and rabbits if you want to. I kind of I kind of favor... Uh, uh, Ribeyes, mm -hmm. cook medium. I, can, I cook them in a pan. Put ghee butter in a pan. Put a little ghee butter in there. It's so simple. The meal I can get done. Miss Daisy doesn't even have to cook it for me. Sometimes she does, but I usually do it myself. Put a little ghee butter in there, about a tablespoon in a, in a skillet. And if you don't know what ghee butter is, it's, it's clarified butter. It's one of the best butters out there you can get. You can get it at your local store. If they don't have it, tell them to get their act together and get it for you. Yeah, ghee butter. And then uh, let that heat up. And I put my uh, ribeye in there. And then I grab my sea salt and pepper. And pepper it. Sea salt. Put, uh, put as much salt on there as you want to, to taste. I mean, you don't need to do listen to these doctors saying go on a no, no sodium or low sodium diet. Are you freaking kidding me? Worst thing in the world you can do. I don't know where they come up with this stuff, guys, but I'll tell you what. We're really taking people out with this this uh, way of thinking. Uh, I feel great. Yeah, feeling great. All my numbers are in good shape. No medications. Don't take any medications. Used to. Used to. When I was in that revolving door. And I took myself off the meds. All I did was just monitor... Well, the first one, you know, we talked about before I was on cholesterol, and uh, that had a laundry list of, of, of issues that associated with that that was unbelievable. I was dying on that stuff. And then I talked to so many other people that are getting cancer on that stuff and all kind of crazy. They had a friend check out. Oh, uh, you got to go. You're, you're, well, he was drinking, and, um, he loved his beer and his whiskey and all that. Anyway, he uh, goes in. This guy, I used to dive with him back in the day, scuba dive with this guy. This guy was Tarzan, okay? Absolutely a Tarzan. Him and I, we, uh, we, we slayed a lot of fish back in the day with our scuba gear, spear guns. But anyway, he got uh, started getting diabetes. Yeah, eating him standard American diet and started getting diabetes. And then... Uh, I told him, I said, here on you oh man, I said, that's not good. I said, you're getting you got diabetes, why don't you stop all the sugar and crap you're eating? Well, I don't eat any sugar. I said, Well, you're drinking beer and drinking whiskey. I said, that turns to sugar, right? No, I don't know that. Okay, well I'm telling you, it does, okay? So why don't you get off all that carb crap that you're on and straighten yourself out? So you can keep scuba diving, keep spearing fish, and on and on. No, he just didn't listen. And he, the doctor told me, so I got a good doctor. This guy is great. He told me that I can partake in some of that. 
I just watch those blood numbers, and we'll keep pumping the, the uh, metformin or whatever that crap he was on into him. And so he kept up and kept up, and then he started having a little kidney issues. All that goes along with the diabetes, and then the circulation starts going, and you just start getting crippled up, and on and on and on. And then what happened next? Got brain cancer. Mm -hmm. Brain cancer took out Tarzan. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Hey, you know something? What's going on? The government's finally extracting head from booty. Uh huh. Our government and our best special uh, fighting force on planet Earth is what? Mm hmm. Navy SEALs. Guess what, guys? Navy SEALs are on ketogenic diet. Yep. They're finally our government's finally getting it together. But I don't know why it isn't mainstream or whatever. Well, I do know. I do know because there's no money in it. There is no money, zero money in 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 self care. There's tons of money to be made in, uh, you know, the standard American care, you know, the modern medical association and big pharma. And they were, doctors were all trained by big pharma. Big pharma likes pushing all their metformin, hypertension medication, and your cholesterol medication. This is just fact. It's not made up stories or anything else. The other fact is, if you switch over to this diet or go totally carnivore, uh, you're going to be good to go. And like I said, was starting to say before, I said, what, they said, what do you eat? I said, well, I, I eat, I eat ribeyes, I eat, you know, I eat fish, I eat chicken, uh, birds, uh, not sandhill cranes that you saw up here earlier. No, I don't eat those, but Ted Nugent does. He calls that ribeye in the sky. You go, bro, Ted, on uh, that deal. But we, they're protected here in Florida, so let's not be whacking these sandhill cranes here, okay? But yeah, that's uh, it's a very simple diet. It's so it's so easy. It's ridiculous, guys. Uh, in the morning, I'll have usually scrambled eggs with some deli ham chopped up in it, and and throw in a slice of cheese. That's my breakfast. I'll drink a couple cups of coffee. That's it. Go on my two mile hike. Come back. Um, about noonish, the skillet starts getting warmed up, and I'm putting in that pound, pound and a quarter. I've ate, I've actually eaten too much as two pounds of ribeye at one time, but that's over. That's way over the kill there. Yeah, you don't. I don't need to do that much anymore. But um, anyway, that's it. And maybe a handful of nuts during the day almonds or cashew that's it that's all I eat and I'd get all that meal done by one o'clock 1 p.m. that's it I don't eat nothing else for the rest of the day I'll sip and sip on my green tea on sweet I even got off stevia and uh, and swerve got off of those two and I noticed my blood pressure was kicking up a little bit and I, I don't know if it's that stevia or not but since i've eliminated that pressure is beautiful absolutely beautiful uh, so anyway i just thought i'd pass that along to you the stuff i'm doing and uh it's working out great guys it really is if you want to start changing your life get off all this stupid medication and uh because you don't want death by doctor okay you don't want it all right, that's enough schooling on doctor silliness. Okay, now what are we going to do? Well, look at this tool right here, guys. Look at this tool, little beauty right here. Look at that fancy handle. I don't know what Rick gets those. This comes from uh, Rick Storman, by the way. Rick Storman, super nice guy. He's in the club. You guys want one of these tools here. You've seen him on... Uh, You've seen these tools on uh, Man Lake site and a few others. Uh, they want 500 and a half for these things. 500. This is the same tool. This does the same job, guys. Absolutely does. This thing heats up to about 450 degrees in no time. Okay. It is 110. It is 110. So I've got an out yard. I've got to throw on. i got a little tailgater 
you know, a little tailgater two cycle generator from from Harbor Freight. I throw that on my truck. I throw on a hundred foot of cord so I can run around with this thing. Yep, this is a tool. Uh, check with with uh, Rick on this. It's uh, his email is R I C K S T O R M uh, T O S T O R M A N at gmail.com. Okay, and I'll put that in the notes below. And uh, you get you get two of these high heat silicone cups with this. And uh, but I ordered. I ordered 10 more and Rick got them to me and then I made up this little tray here you also Rick sends you a scoop for that that little scoop it looks like a half inch sweat cap that's uh, I think one gram and you scoop that up your acid and you put them in here I just load this up and then I take this to the bee yard with me this this hole in here this is just two pieces of three-quarter plywood and I've got I think nine gauge aluminum wire here and uh, let me give you the dimensions of this little tray in case you want to burn out a copy of this this plywood measures 14 14 by 6 14 by 6 and the holes that I bored in here just happened to be a one that I had is two as uh, one and three quarter one and three quarter hole here it's a little sloppy in there but no big deal and that sets up about right because you can just grab this see and come out of here with it and uh, I bored through just 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 through all the way through the one block and then uh, I put this on I did have scrap piece underneath so I went carve up this inner piece and then I glued and screwed it together right so that's that. I got a piece of uh, I got a piece of conduit on here that's one foot long. This is one foot, and I just guesstimated. I put it in here with screws. You can see I just took that, bent that wire in a little loop, and put a little washer on it, and uh, put it in with a a little drywall screw. Is all I did. So that's going to work out slick. Here's the acid I've been using comes from uh, Florida laboratories you can get it on Amazon yeah and uh, while you're down uh, you use with this tool guys this thing gets hot this dude gets hot and if you touch this any of this stuff here you're gonna get burnt okay he's got like a it's just a, I guess a blanket around there I'm, I'm assuming that's an asbestos blanket and then he's got it uh, on there with these stainless straps uh, the hole that I drill this little tubing here uh, this little tubing looks like it's maybe 3 16 3 16 OD looks like and uh, it is copper it is copper and it is well, as it gets hot it could Sometimes it'll sag a little bit, but Rick said no big deal. You can bend it back up I'm gonna talk to Rick and see if he can't incorporate Maybe can't for the you know because he's, he's Sweating it in I don't know if he braces that in or not that tube into the into the cup here This is just a copper cup by the way on there But this these this he's got a heat jacket running around this thing and this sucker gets hot in a hurry now. I'm not kidding you. So you got to wear your uh, welder's gloves. Okay, well, welder's gloves. You can get them at Harbor Freight. They're really super cheap. And also, pick yourself up a, a Harbor Freight respirator while you're down there. Because this stuff will knock you out. It is, it is uh, yeah, it's some strong stuff. I've got a few hives I got to drill out here yet. I'm going to put a drill a bit in a quarter inch. A lot of my beefy beehives, all all my hives are beefy beehives. I've got and the reason I call them beefy they're made of the ends the ends of the hives 
are made of one and a half inch stock. Same as a two by four, okay? Same thickness. So I will put a piece of painter's tape on there one and, a, uh, one and a half inches from the tip for a mark. And then you can feel too when you push it through it, when it plunges through the wall, you can feel it free up. And, uh, and then I put a golf tee in there. That's it. Just keep a golf tee in there and uh, that'll feel the hole. If you don't put a golf tee in there, the bees will propolis the hole shut. It'll just goo it up with glue and then you'll have to rot it out or drill it out every time. So that, put a golf tee in there. And that's it. Uh, we'll get out here in a little bit. And uh, oh, Miss Daisy gave me a haircut today. Isn't that nice? Yep, she gave me her. I'm still, I'm still shedding. And guess what I did? I gave Miss Daisy a haircut. Would you believe it? Didn't do too bad a job. Didn't do too bad a job on it. Uh, she says she really won't know till she shampoos it and, and, and combs it out. And then of course she'll get in her mirror and look around, you know, to make sure everything is just good to go. But yeah, old Stevo is, is multi-talented. Yeah, he's doing haircuts too. And so is Miss Daisy. So that's a wonderful thing. And uh, let's get out back here and uh, do it to him. I, this will be the first time I shoot him in a year. I was going to do a roll test. I mean, a uh, alcohol wash. I told Miss Daisy last time she she went to the store. And um, she got me some more ribeyes too. Oh boy, they were good. Them are good. Got them on sale. They're telling me we're having a meat, it's going to have a meat shortage. Are you kidding me? Miss Daisy said, you're not going to be happy if we have a meat shortage. I said, hey, I'm a hunter, you know. I'm a hunter. I will find the meat, you know. And if we ever run out of meat, you know, I'll just start eating vegans. Just kidding. I'm not going to eat a vegan, all right. I don't, you know, well... Depends on how hungry I get, you know? But anyway, I don't think we'll have to go there. I think Mr. Trump said to keep the beef, the beef industry going. Yeah. And let's stop importing beef, okay? We got enough ranchers here. Let's take care of let's take care of the USA ranchers. I tell you what a lot of these ranchers are doing. They're still I don't know if this is legal or not. I don't see how anything gets state inspected or whatever. that's probably a flipping joke anyway. Inspections on meat anymore. Uh, a lot of these ranchers are processing their own and going direct to the customer. Yeah. So that might be something that's cool in the future. I don't know where Florida stands. I think we're second or third or fourth on the planet for raising beef. We raise a lot of beef here. Uh, some of this stuff is looking good that I've seen. I mean, these cattle are looking great. They're a Brahma something sh uh, limousine or something cross. They're, these things are looking beautiful. Huge, bulky animals. And they're just sitting out there eating Florida Bahia grass. That stuff don't look like it's got any nutrition in it. Nothing like you see in Michigan, you know, where they're eating that alfalfa grass. That beautiful stuff that I used to bail up like crazy when I was a kid. Oh man, those bales weighed more than I did. Unreal. Made a little pocket money back in the day working for dairy farmers in my young buck days. Had some good memories of that stuff. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we don't run out of meat. Because I surely don't want to start eating vegans. No, I just don't have an appetite for that sort of thing. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer liked it, but I I don't know. Jeffrey, uh, I don't know. Jeffrey's not with us anymore. I think they took him out of the food chain. Anyway, all right, guys, let's get out back and uh, gas these bees. This will be the first time in the year. I didn't get any, uh, I was going to, like I said, going to do some alcohol wash. Miss Daisy went down there to get alcohol for me, I told her to get a couple of bottles. I want to start alcohol washing some of these bees and checking for varroa mites. She come back, she said, no alcohol, rubbing alcohol I was on the shelf. I said, you got to be kidding me. Really? We're hoarding that stuff too? Oh boy, guys. Oh well, it is what it is, right? So I'm not even going to worry about alcohol wash. 
I was pulling some caps off of some drone brood out there. And normally those varroa mites like to get on that, you know, that varroa, uh, the varroa mites like to get on that drone brood. I didn't see anything, but it's not going to hurt the bees. Uh, let's go ahead. I don't like shooting it in on um, brand new virgins or queen cells in there. I don't like doing that. Uh, I like to get let the colony get established, get the queen laying good, and then and then give them the oxalic acid. Uh, so it's just my way of doing it. And if you guys have a better way of doing it, let me know. Uh, I got my traps in there the other day uh, for high beetle traps. I made up a bunch of them fresh ones and stuck in there. I got a I pulled the old ones. Here's the old ones here, and I uh, cleaned them up. And sometimes they get propolis up. You just take a toothpick and rot them out. I had another little brainstorm. I don't know if this is worth doing or not. But there's propolis on these. This, these two aren't too bad here. I may experiment with this. See, so you know, you see your corrugations are here. That's where those beetles are coming in, right? And I, I do a tape on the top and bottom. You've seen that movie before. And then I put my little dots of uh, Max Force bait in there. But I, I had a, this little brainstorm came up. So I thought taking one this way and then taking one this way and hot gluing hot gluing the two together okay hot gluing those so you have something that looks like this so what does that do for you well you can get beetles coming through that way and you can get beetles coming through that way either way these these bees and I would keep I would keep this one on the bottom so the beetles don't have to crawl up and come into this chamber but they have the option too I've watched bees chase these uh, beetles around and they're quite aggressive but they can't get a handle on them. they want to grab them and just choke them out right but they can't they're fighting them like that and they're crawling around they got that little hard helmet shell on them. the bees just can't get into them and, and get them they might if they could flip them over and bite them you know, sink their mandibles right into that belly or something, but they just usually can't get a hold of them. I've watched them, and it's uh, really something how they chase them around, but I was thinking put one mark, have this, and mark it, mark it either way, you can do it either way, have top and bottom, right? Put this one on first, like I do, do my cornstarch corn thing, blow them out right then take my syringe and put just four dots in there instead of I could do four and six I could you know experiment right and that that right there those two sandwiched up I'm looking right at guys uh, Maybe five sixteenths thick here. Five sixteenths I'm dealing with, and that's going to go on the top. You could throw one on the bottom of the of the hive. There's plenty of room down there. Put it in the back. But mine, I've got, uh, I've got, I think I've got plenty of room in there on my hives uh, to throw it on top of the frames. I'm going to make up a few and, and test drive these for you and see. If they work that way, you've got you've got access for the beetles to come either way, top or bottom, on all four. No matter which way you put this in, it's just a four-inch square. They could come this way or come in the end. Yeah. So that'll be an experiment. It'll be fun to play with to see how that works. Uh, the beetles, I have not seen that much. I've seen a couple. I had a colony go down out there, and. Uh, I waited, I knew it was down. I let the bees uh, just rob it out what they could. And, uh, but who else was coming in? The high beetles were coming in because that colony was down. There was enough resources in there for them to lay eggs. So I had little small maggots running through and they were fixing to slime it out. 
and uh, I had I did on another colony get one slime pretty bad, and I thought, you know, I froze it to kill everything, and then I pulled it out. I smelled it and everything. It didn't smell too bad, really. I mean, it didn't have any bad off odors. But I was just looking at it, kind of glistening, and I said, you know, I had some other frames I wanted to melt down, so I fired up the old uh, wax melter, and I just threw them in there and let them cook out everything. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, that's the only... That's the only stuff I've seen happen on my uh, hives this this year, a couple die-outs. And it doesn't take long for the critters to start coming in. And it uh, seems like the high beetles come in before the wax moths do. But uh, if you pull them out of there, you see a few wax moths flying around in there, but your comb isn't chewed up yet. Get that stuff out of there, if it's a good-looking comb, hey... Put it in these little trash bags, 13 gallon trash bags like I do. Put two or three, or four. I think you put like five in there. Pull the drawstring tight and just put it in the freezer. Miss Daisy, don't get too mad at you. Put it in the freezer overnight. The next morning, pull it out, set it here in the barn. Just turn it up so no critters can get up back up in there and, uh, and uh, get at your stuff. So, anyway, uh, that's what we got going on today. I'll, uh, like I say, I have to go out here and drill a few boxes, I noticed. And then I've got two colonies over there, those two framers. I need to get over there. It's been almost a week since I've been there. Put that one jar on them. There's lots of palmetto in that area. That is cool. Uh, as I came in that gate there the other day, there was like, I don't know, six or eight palmettos there. They're really old, too. These things are up. Oh man, four or five feet. Those things have got to be, that's probably one of the most ancient growing plants in this state. Those things can grow, if you get one like five feet high, that's three, four hundred years old. These, them things go on forever. And uh, that is some of the best honey. And they really produce, at certain times of the year now, if it's really dry, no, not so much. And we did have a little dry spell, but we've had a few rains. Hopefully that blooms full of nectar. And uh, them bees are getting happy over there. But uh, I'll go over there, take my little pony generator, and uh, shoot that, shoot the ox to them, and uh, get them on the right. And then I'll do it again. I'll probably do it. Uh, I'll probably do it every other week. I'm thinking. Okay. Well, we'll just keep an eye. As soon as the, as soon as the stores re start restocking the. Uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, then I can start doing some periodic uh, alcohol washes to see where my, my counts are. Alright, so let's get out here in the bee yard and get her done. Okay guys, turn the tool up like this, put your rubber plug in, stick it in the hole, rotate it, rotate it over, and give it a little tap, that acid will drop. So I got four on this string here. Got one in the swamp. And I need to drill that one of them boxes. The bottom box is drilled, but the top is, and I gotta drill it. See if it's boiling out good here. Already ran around, put out my golf tees. That thing went up to 480 something. I think Rick said it, it uh, runs uh, right around 450. It's a good number. That's it, it's played out. 
Stick your golf tee in it. Get your next one. Goes quite fast. You can do this once a week if you want to. But just kind of keep monitoring it with an alcohol wash to see how crazy it's getting, you know? That's all you can do. Make sure you wear eye protection with this stuff. Of course, I've got glasses on. That helps. Two, make sure if you after you've done it once, the bees are going to propolis. So take your golf tee and ramrod that hole. Make sure it's opened up good. If there's any restrictions on this tool. Any restrictions on this tool, that, that red cap will come blasting off in your face. So you want to be careful you don't get any acid in your face. Boils out fast. I've had no issues with this tool so far. Used it all last season. So I think you'll like it for the price. I think it's 150. It's 150 plus he's got some shipping charge, which is a little a little bit of shipping charge, maybe 20 bucks I think. But this tool has got them other ones, that ProVap and all of them. Man, you can't beat it, guys, for the price. They're really roaring in there. I've got all screen bottoms on these, too. Some guys say to plug them up, but I have not uh, seen too much of a problem doing it the way I'm doing it. Okay guys, I'm going to shut the camera down. i got to get an extension cord to get out there and drill another hole in that hive.
and I really screwed up because the the one T golf tee is on the front. I should have flipped it to the back, but it happened. I'm going to drill that other top box from the back side, so I'm blasting. I'm going to put on double. You use two grams, so you shoot a gram in the bottom and a gram in the top. If you got three stacks, shoot a gram in each hole. That's the way we roll. All right. Let me get this thing drilled over here. Okay, guys, I got the uh, Wicked Witch of the West here, Hive. Uh, that second round of bees that came in here, that queen, she was just as mean as the first one. So I pinched her head off. I went to my good Georgia baby girl hive, and I put a fresh... I let them go for 10 days. Came back, found every one of the Wicked Witch cells. I killed them, crushed them. Then I inserted a frame of eggs and larvae from my sweet baby Georgia girl in here. So that's what I got. So uh, we got to check it on 523. So anyway, that's what I got. I had to come and drill this one. Normally I put these in the back. But I made a mistake when I assembled this. The plug got up front. Oh, by the way, I found out who is related to the Wicked Witch of the West. You know, remember in Wizard of Oz, you had the Green Witch, the nasty Wicked Witch of the West. I found out something. That witch is Nancy Pelosi's grandmother, okay? Yeah, I found that out because I took one of the flying monkeys. They all wear diapers, right? The flying monkeys have diapers on. I pulled his diapers off and stuck his ass in a uh, in a big bed of fire ants. And he spilled his guts, let me tell you. Because I, I had a number two wash tub sitting here. I had the fire ants here, right? So I told him I want answers. He said, you're not getting nothing from me. So I stuck his butt in fire ants, and he told me the whole story about the Wicked Witch and, and, and Nancy's, you know, grandmother. So then I put it, cooled him off in the ice water, and he was fine. I gave him his underwear, his, his diaper back, and he flew off, okay? So that's the story on the Wicked Witch of the West. All right, I got more hives to do over here. Yeah, I switched cords. It takes a couple minutes to heat back up to 400, but you can see how fast it's clicking them off. Yeah. It gets her done, guys. It gets her done. I got some debris in this hole or something here. See how fast that puts that out, but it's backing up on me. I'm gonna have to put a fresh one in here. Something was giving me a little back pressure on that.
I don't know. I got he's backing up on me for some reason, or some something on the other side there. Maybe I got a frame real close in there. Maybe I got a frame real close in there. I'm going to slap one down through the rooftop here. Let's try this. Day or so, I'm going to go into this hive and see what's restricting that because that's not normally an issue for me. I'm not usually real happy with this program. Oh well, they'll get over it. Make, make sure you put these golf tees back in, guys. Don't forget them. They can get ornery on this stuff, guys, so have your smoker on the ready in case one of these hives try to blow up on you. That one seems to be shooting in pretty good. Yeah, it's coming out the bottom real good. You can hear them roaring inside that hive, fanning that stuff around. <laughs> Killing them little woolly boogers. The mites that is, not my bees. All right, I'm going to break this cord apart here. And run my extension cord around.
that's why it's kind of nice to have these extras because you know you could waste one of these here or there you could drop one and that way you can go back to your your bag and reload these things up another little trick here when you're cleaning these cups you see all this extra stuff on here when you're cleaning them up clean them up before dump these out on your bench or somewhere leave your respirator on get a paper towel and clean these cups out before you put it to bed because if you come back here later without this mask on and you're in the shop as you're cleaning these this fine mist of this acid will come up and hit your nose and it will give you an attitude adjustment trust me been there and done it just giving you a little heads up yeah that one's shooting in great all right guys I got one more to go I got one more to go over here that's it then I got to go run to that other yard and uh, no I lied to you I got to do this one yet I got to do this hive yet so I got two more to go here then I got to run to that other yard and do two more over there so thanks for coming by today stay, st stay safe keep that six foot spacing with everything except Miss Daisy well actually three things Miss Daisy your honeybees and your butcher that cuts them ribeye steaks for you all right all right guys be happy be safe be strong because we got to keep getting our own I'll see you on the next one